and welcome to episode nine of the Inspires podcast. I'm Jess M. Cutler, your host today, and I am so excited to be sharing this interview on the Insight series of the podcast, even though I very much feel like this was just a conversation that I needed for myself. <laughs> but hopefully by sharing it, you will find some inspiration in different areas of your life because we cover so many things today. So today's conversation is with an incredibly inspiring entrepreneur, Erin Harrington, who is a Christian wife, mom, business coach, and speaker, who she claims is a recovering driver, striver, and achievement chaser. Uh, so basically, we could be twins. <laughs> if you've been following along with me on my social media, there have been quite a few times over uh, the last year that there's been things that have happened that I've used the hashtag, some call it coincidence, I call it Christ. Well, this has certainly been another instance that it was no coincidence that we met. Our meeting was definitely a divine appointment. Um, so here's the story real quick. Uh, I know I mentioned it a few times uh, that a few weeks ago, me and my best friend Mandy went to a women's conference called NARO in Asheville, North Carolina, and it was actually hosted by a Christian women organization called She Works His Way. Uh, and for Mandy's birthday, I kept hearing God tell me, or maybe it was all the emails coming into my inbox, making it seem like the best way to attend this conference um, should be VIP. That, so for her birthday, my gift should be upgrading our tickets to VIP, which came with a lot of perks, uh, but it also meant we could sit at the front row tables, which straight A's. I like to sit at the front row. Uh, so when I went to go purchase the tickets, they were actually sold out. So I was like, all right, God, well... Uh, if you want us in VIP, then you'll just need to do your thing. Uh, so it was actually less than like 24 hours that I got an email that two seats had come available. So already like my God sensing radar was like, yes, there's going to be a blessing in the VIP. So when we got there at registration, you had to, um, and I've actually never seen registration done this way. Um, you know, I've done a thousand different registrations. But anyway, you, you grab this blank lanyard and you just fill out your information. So we did that. We got to our front row seats uh, and they were tables of three. So I made it to my right, empty chair to my left. Um, and then even though there were plenty of seats available at the time, like even still on the front row, like Aaron came and sat down beside me. Uh, we, of course, small talked, but that was pretty much it. Um, within the conference... Uh, we also had breakouts into small groups that were decided by random numbers placed on your lanyard. <laughs> so smart. Um, so, you know, when we were grabbing them in the beginning, that was actually determining our small group. So when it was time to break, Mandy went to her group and Erin and I went into ours. Uh, now, I was a few minutes late because I was totally fangirling over Jordan Rayner, getting him to sign my call to create book, taking a selfie. And so I came up... Uh, and I actually thought that she said she was a life coach, which is what Mandy just got her certification in and um, is looking to love and so serve others um, through life coaching. So when we got back to the hotel that night, I was like, Mandy, oh my gosh, like let's definitely talk with Erin because I think she said she was a life coach and maybe she could be a good resource for you as you're starting up your life coaching business. Uh, so, of course, we got there the next morning when we started talking. I actually realized that she's like literally like business life goals for me right now. <laughs> and her particular insight is exactly what I'm looking for as I'm developing the Inspires platform and redefining events, reinventing events, building in forms, and literally redefining my hustle. Uh, so, I looked at Mandy and I was like, oh, yeah, I thought maybe God like put her put her here for you, but uh, no, God sent her here for me. <laughs> but that's not true because what she has to say is for everyone. And I feel like there is so much that we as women can relate to daily. Um, I actually feel personally attacked by some of the descriptions she uses to describe herself because <laughs> I feel her words so hard right now as I too feel like I'm a recovering driver, striver, and achievement chaser. Uh, so I definitely know that she was meant to be a part of my life right now and certainly in the future. So here she is, the Hustle with Heart coach, Erin Harrington, talking about everything from identity to calling to purpose to spiritual gifts to redefining hustle and escaping overwhelm and overachievement. Enjoy. 
I am so excited to have you here today um, just to really get with you and hear about your life and just where you've been, where you come from and where you're going. Oh my gosh. So I feel, so and much. I, and I feel like I say that <laughs> so easily, right? Like it's just like here, there and there, but like, we all know that that's, it's like never that easy. Yeah. So I would really love just to kind of let you get us started today and just kind of talk to me a little bit about where you've been, like what's, what has started, what has started this reinvention to insight to all the N words that I can insert here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, well, first it's such an honor to be here. And I, I love how God makes connections in the most le- sort of least likely places that you would expect. So uh, Jessica and I met at a conference at the narrow conference by she works his way. I just moseyed my way on up to the front of the room. And I was like, I'm sitting in the front row. And there she was. And then we started chatting and it's always amazing to me how he uses that. So my prayer is that something that I say will like the Holy spirit will just infuse what I'm saying because someone in your audience, and sometimes it's me and sometimes it's you <laughs> needs to hear what, what he wants to impart today. So, um, I live in the DC area, grew up here. Uh, I currently live in Chesapeake beach. So I live on the Western shore of the Chesapeake Bay. I'm a wife and a, of it'll be 28 years in January. I have two daughters, 24 and 22 tomorrow. Um, and so we're empty nest. And I have been a driver's driver and achievement chaser my whole life. I I like to say that I'm a recovering driver's driver and achievement chaser. So I was the oldest of four to a single mom and we lived in and out of poverty. My mom worked incredibly hard. So the idea of hard work was instilled in me in a very young age. And the idea of living without was instilled in me in a very young age. So all of my drive and tenacity and sort of like, go get it, make it happen-ness was all born out of me not wanting to live forever the way I had grown up. So money was very important to me. Achievement was very important to me. I always wanted to be the big deal. And all of that led me to, you know, get a, get, get a degree and get a job and get a steady, stable corporate job. And that's what I did. So I was in corporate for 23 years, uh, 25 total, 23 years into that journey. I had, my daughters were 10 and 13. And I was like, I never wanted to be a stay at home mom. I'm not cut out for that. Praise all y'all stay at home moms. I couldn't do it, but I wanted more time and flexibility because we had money, but what I didn't have was time. I was traveling 70% of the time. I was a primary breadwinner in our family. And I just wanted something that would give me time. And so I started a network marketing business in, in 2010 and started to put all my eggs into that basket, rose very quickly uh, up the ranks of that company to the third of four ranks. And then I got let go from my job and I was like, oh, God's got this. Look, he's putting it all together for me. And I had a great, a great business. Um, But 2014, so four years into that business with all the success I had, I kind of woke up one day and I was like, this is not what I thought this was going to feel like. Like I had the accolades and I had the money but I just hit this wall and I was unfulfilled and I just kept doing, 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 because that's what I had learned, right? You just got to do more. You just got to do more. Mm -hmm. And if you want it, if it is to be, it's up to me and you got to go make it happen. And so I, that's kind of, I lived on those mantras. And so over a conversation with a mentor of mine, where I was like, I just don't know what else to do. She asked me a fateful question, which was, do you know who you are and whose you are? And I was like, I don't really know what you're talking about. And she said, do you have a relationship with Jesus? And I immediately said, of course I do. And she was like, um, um, I'm not really sure that's, that's true. But see, for me at the time, Jesus was sort of this, like the universe law of attraction mashup. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and I felt like I had a relationship with God. I felt like I was, um, you know, leaning into the Lord and, and praying a lot and all the things, but I really did not have a relationship with Jesus. Like I had not given my life to him. So on that day, October 4th, 2014, she prayed the prayer of salvation over me and I gave my life to Christ and everything changed. Now I want to be clear that because I'm an achievement chaser and a goal setter and a list maker, I was like, Oh, checked that box. 
now Jesus, bring it all, right? <laughs> um, so, so from 2014, really to 2018, God had a lot of pruning, a lot of peeling back and, and reinventing, as you talked about earlier. And he took what I had made an idol, this business that I had, um, that I had really put on a pedestal, that I had made my savior because we had made some very poor financial decisions when I, my job let me go in 2012. Um, and so this business was going to do it all. And he had to break that stronghold. He had to break that pride. He had to break me as an overachiever and really peel those layers away and reinvent what he had already planned for me to be. Because obviously we know as Christians, when you give your life to the Lord, like when you give your life to Jesus, you are a new creation, but it's hard to let go of what you were a little bit, right? Not, I don't think that's necessarily true for everybody, but it was true for me. So over those years, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, he really just began to peel back some layers and he did, it, it just, I mean, he delivered me from so much. I mean, so much, um, d our finances, you know, we went through financial peace university and made very different decisions financially, which changed the legacy of our family. It saved our marriage, like just all of the things, because I think sometimes as women in the world, we look at the world's definitions of success and we feel number one, we have to keep up with everybody else. Number two, our head is on swivel because we're constantly looking left and right about where she is and I'm not, and she has this and I don't. And then number three, we're, we're so hell bent on the achievement and the, and, and all of the success and all of that, because we've wrapped our identity in that, whether we believe it or not, it is true that we get really lost on the way. And he's got to break those things off of us for us to really truly be what he's made us to be and to have the kingdom impact that he wants us to have. So that's the story in a nutshell. Um, and then, you know, in 2018, he began to shift me and it was hard going, like, you know, I was given Jesus the wheel as Carrie Underwood says, but I kept taking it back and the car was swerving all over the place. And, um, <laughs> he, he just began to show me sort of this roadmap of what does it look like to do business God's way? What does it look like to have pursue success his way and, and to have a biblical foundation? And what does that mean? And then he began to say there that he would put women in my path and we'd have conversations and he would say, she needs what I taught you. And I was like, what, wait, what? <laughs> um, and so what I thought would be my savior, this business obviously was never meant to be my savior because only Jesus can be. And then he reinvented what business would be for me and led me into my coaching, my speaking, my podcasting to help other women learn how to pursue success his way. So, and so you just said it, but say it again. So what is it that you actually, what is it that you actually do now? Yeah. So what I do now is I teach Christian women in business, how to redefine hustle and escape overwhelm and overachievement. Because when, when they can escape that, when they can break those chains, then they're able to walk out God's assignment with clarity and serenity and ultimately fulfillment. And I do that through my coaching. I do that through my writing and my speaking. And it is so fulfilling to see God move in, in someone when he, cause you know, when he gets a hold of you, like all bets are off, right? I mean, he just, when, if we're truly surrendered to that, it is the most beautiful thing to see somebody experience like immediately in the very first few sessions or, or what have you, they immediately are like, Oh, I don't have to do this by myself. Like God's got me. We were just talking about that a minute ago. Like God's got me steadily. Right. And if I just focus on him, this doesn't have to be this grind. It doesn't have to be this driving and striving. And it's incredible to watch. So this, this driving, this driving, I know you said that obviously you've, you've struggled as you've kind of 
come through this reinvention to kind of get where you are? Do you, are you good now? Or is it like, this is something that's like every day it's like, how does, so if that, so if you're still struggling with it, like how, how does your day begin? How do you get started where you're walking, but he's studying you? Yeah. So I do want to acknowledge that it is a daily decision that we get to make because he gives us free will, right? I mean, he does. And I have a daily discipline that starts and ends with him. So I start my day. I, I don't check email right away. I'm not on social media right away. Like I start in my U version Bible and, um, you know, reading the verse of the day and then jumping into the actual Bible and reading through, um, right now I'm reading, well, I'm reading through the Bible. I'm in Exodus right now. Um, there's a great app, which I think is called read Bible anyway. <laughs> um, and so I start my day in prayer and in journaling and in my, you know, my prayer journal is, is what I'm really doing. And then I end my day in that I end my day in prayer. So those just were the bookends of my day. Um, but what it looks like daily is now knowing because of ongoing, the Holy spirit developing me, I can feel when I'm starting to get overwhelmed, I can feel when I'm starting to overachieve. I can feel when I'm starting to be like, Oh Lord, you gave me these three things to do, but I'm going to take these extra five things. And he's like, no, that's not, no. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's no, it's, it's being in tune to know that I'm starting to, you know, kind of get ramped up and, and get into the driving striving so that, and I did this literally two hours ago, I sat back and I was like, okay, listen, like you need to get it together. Right. <laughs> and I, normally I'm just literally hitting my knees on the, on, in my office and saying, you know, praying Psalm 25, four and five, like, show me your ways. Oh Lord, teach me your paths because it's all his right. And it just has taken me a long time to learn that. So I do still struggle. And that's why I always say when I'm working with someone or I'm talking on my podcast, like I might only be one step ahead of you. But allow my hindsight to be your foresight guided by God's insight, right? Mm, and that's good. Because oh, that's good. like we have to lift as we rise. We have to, we have to help each other because who like obviously God can do it, but he can get very lonely being being an entrepreneur and a business owner. And so we have to reach out and back and forward around us uh, because we all still struggle with it. So no, I'm not, I would never say like, I'm good because here's the Bible said, and I don't know where this is in the Bible. I, I mean, I know it's in the Bible, but it says like, we have to work out our salvation. <laughs> like it, it's an, we will never be perfect on this side of heaven. And so the sooner we're like, yep. Okay. I understand now. Then the less we're beating ourselves up or we're feeling shame or guilt over what we think is very little progress, but the Lord's like, do you see how far I've brought you? <laughs> <laughs> I, you saying that it's like, I, I feel very much the same way. I, I, a lot of the words that you said, and just even, you know, had to, had to break you, like you idolize that business and had to get rid of that pride and just, you know, just be all feeling like maybe I'm only one step ahead. Like I, I, I feel you on that. It's like, even with this yes. podcast, I feel like I literally feel like I'm one chapter ahead of everybody else. And it's like, Ooh, let me just tell you what I just learned. And it's like, so it's been such a cool, just, just progression in that ability to just kind of continue to share. And, and like, I love hearing you say that, but I know that you kind of talk about like, you sort of have these places where you feel like, especially with some of the ladies, we were talking about this earlier, where you feel like they struggle. Like there's like mm -hmm. these kind of like these four main areas, like, tell me, tell me more about that. Sure. And really this is born out of my own experience, my own journey through this, because I can say that it, it, it very often in my prayer time, I believe that the Holy spirit is saying like, okay, I gave you this map, go share it. Right. And so what he's really laid on my heart through the conversations and, and coaching and, and what have you is that as women, we struggle in four areas. I call it the four keys. Um, I have a guy, the little guide that you can, you can download. Um, and these four keys are define, direct, discipline, and develop. So the first one is allowing God to define us because who better? than he who created us to define us. In other words, where are we wrapping our identity? If 
if we are only wrapping our identity in the work that we do, in the achievements, in the money, in the titles, in the whatever, then when our business is up, we're going to be great. And when our business is down, we're going to be so far down in that valley. And so one of the things that he showed me early in my journey, and then I help women understand is all, all of the things that, that God says you are in the Bible, right? We are chosen and redeemed and more than conquerors and just all of these things. And we have to allow him to define us, him, him to define our identity, him to define um, our gifts, him to define what success means to him and the path that we're going to be on. If we allow him to define that, that is the number one thing that I see when I work with women that they immediately, and I said this earlier, that they sort of immediately take an exhale because they're like, oh, he defines me. I'm his, I am his. You are the daughter of the most high king. You know, I I don't know. I've never read Genesis um, the way somebody put this a, a few months ago, but they said the last the very last thing that God created was woman. <laughs> We're the very, like, we are the crown jewel of creation, right? Are. And so we've got to wrap our identity and anchor our identity to him. Jesus is the vine. We are the branch. We have to be so connected to that branch because that's where all nourishment flows. He says in John 15, four and five, like apart from him, we can do nothing. So we're, we're better than to define ourselves. Right. And so that's the first place that I see women struggle is they've wrapped their identity in the achievement and the job and, and, and even their roles like wife, mom, all of those things. Right. The second, and, and when you, when you anchor your identity and you allow him to define you, it unlocks clarity because you are so clear about who you are and whose you are. Right. It unlocks serenity because it gives you calm and peace. And ultimately he is our portion. He is our fulfillment. So define allows all of that. The second key is direct. We are control freaks, <laughs> um, especially as ambitious women. Like even if you think you are disorganized, you know, you have a plan and things need to go your way. Right. Yes. And that can get us um, just tied up in knots and angst and overwhelm and overachievement. But when we know that ultimately what we have in business and life is his, and we're just here to steward it. And we can allow him to literally be our GPS, right? He is our compass. We allow him to direct us. It takes the burden off of us. It takes the pressure off of us because we don't have to make everything perfect. We can be present over perfect. Great book, by the way. Um, I did not write that, but (laughs) That, that, that direction, you know, even when you're anchoring your identity in the Lord and allowing him to define you, you still want to be in charge, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can relinquish control and allow him to direct us, he knows better than anyone because he's already written the rest of it. He already knows where we're going. So instead of getting caught up in like, this isn't working and I don't have this client, I didn't sign that contract or whatever. What if we just said, Lord, this is yours. Clearly you have something on my path ahead that I don't know about lead me. Right. So that direction piece, the third thing is discipline. And sometimes we can sit back and say, I'm just going to pray over it and I'm going to let the Lord define it and direct me, but we have to take action. Faith without works is dead, right? Mm -hmm. We have to work out our salvation. So, so we've got to put trust in action. We have to trust that where he's taking us, and the instructions that he's given us are meant for us. And we have to take the action. We have to be obedient in the action he's given us, right? We have to put a daily discipline in place to take the action that we need to take. Because here's what happens. If Jess gets a direction from the Lord and she doesn't put that in the action and she doesn't say yes, that blocks somebody else's blessing because her action is not just for her. Her action is for kingdom impact. So if we're afraid to take the action, or if we're like too arrogant to take the action, or if we think, I don't know, you know, I think of it as a GPS on your phone. Um, When you plug in an address on your phone, let's say you're walking somewhere, right? And you don't know if you're walking in the right direction until you step. So you've got to take the action and allow the Lord to redirect you. 
right? So that's the discipline piece. I think sometimes women are totally fine with God defining and directing them, but then they don't take action and there has mm. to be action, right? And then the fourth piece is develop. So as we allow the Lord to define us and direct us and then put that into discipline, we learn things along the way. And that's the Holy Spirit's developing. That's where the Holy Spirit takes what we're learning and feeds it back in so that the next time we're better at it. The next time we feel overwhelmed, we're like, hold on, let me pray, right? The next time we feel like we want to get out ahead of God, we can be like, hold on, Lord. I know you gave me a direction and I just took an exit ramp that you did not tell me to take, right? <laughs> it's, it's that ongoing development. And, and I kind of draw it as a circle with God at the center because it's this closed loop. We're constantly learning and then putting that back in and then putting that back in. And that is how he develops us. That is how he guides us to become more of more like Christ, more of what he's made us to be. Again, this is an ongoing, you asked earlier, like, oh, so are you good? Like no longer overwhelmed. And the answer is no. And here's the other reason why, because the enemy seeks to devour and to kill and to destroy. The enemy wants us off course. The enemy throws distraction at us and discontentment and doubt. I call it 3D, right? Because he knows that if we continue to develop, we are so powerful. Mm -hmm. But if he can get us looking over here or looking over there, right? Then he knows that he can get us off track. So this constant development is ongoing always. And I, I know that the sooner we surrender to this process, the sooner we say, Lord, these are the four keys you gave me. I'm going to use them to unlock clarity and serenity. And I'm going to let you be my fulfillment. It just, everything goes much more smoothly. Right. <laughs> and it may not look the way we think it should look mm -hmm. right. Like we may be saying, I'm going to be obedient over here. And then he blesses us over there. We have to be open to those things. So those four things are where I see women most struggle. And it starts, um, it starts really with having the relationship with the Lord, which, you know, he's just waiting for us to do. So, and I, I have a friend and I love her and I, it, everything you just said, I, like it, when you got into, I would say discipline, like. I feel like what you just said, like, I feel like she's, she's been defined and then she's been, she's been directed by God, but in terms of taking the action, it's like, she's, she's paralyzed in a place. Yeah. So when you, when you work with ladies and I know probably lots of ladies sit in that place, it's not just my one friend, oh, yeah. fact, it's me too. It's, it's all of us. I'm sure. What, what do you feel like is maybe some advice you could give them to just to get them to move? Yeah. So when I see women not moving, I see that it tends to be two things, maybe more, but two things. One is they're afraid to move because they're like, I don't know what's the next right thing. Right. And, and they're afraid to step into what God has given them. Maybe because they think their, their old ambition will take over, or maybe they're worried about what other people might think or whatever. So there's a fear there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing is that they are concerned that what God's asking them to do is too big and they can't define it. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, which is a fear in itself, but it's more of like, this is such a big thing. And they think that they have to take it all on themselves. So they become, they've become very self-reliant. So what I help women do is just break down those things like, okay, let's break it down into smaller and smaller pieces so that you can take that one step. Because here's the thing, the Bible says, I think it's in Zephaniah, um, do not despise small steps. Like do not despise the small beginning because see, if you're stepping in obedience, the Lord will exponentially multiply what you do. We can never fully see the full extent of what one small step will do. So what I help them to do is really break all of those pieces down into smaller steps and then say, do you think you could take that step? Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Okay. Why? And then we sort of map it out. We kind of do this exercise I call the mind map where they take that reason that they're so scared or whatever it is. And we kind of write 
down and map out why. Well, because if I do that, then this will happen. Okay. And then this will happen. Right. And so we kind of get to a place where it all sort of spirals down to what is what's really at the core of what's holding them back. So just helping them to break that down um, and putting a daily discipline in place because we, many, many women have incredibly big visions of what the Lord has put on their hearts to do. And they want to trust him, Mm -hmm. but they feel like it's such a big step and they don't even know what that first step is. And because maybe that first step is so little that they don't think, well, what, what impact could that make? Yeah. Yeah. I think of it this way too, Jess, like we all, if you drive, you have headlights, your headlights only shine 200 feet in front of you, but Mm. you trust that the road and the road signs are going to tell you where to go, but you could still really only see that 200 feet with the headlights, right? That's all God is asking you to do. God is asking you to have a, this much like mustard seed trust, right? Have yeah. this little bit of trust and take this step and then take this step. And very often I sense in other women, but certainly in myself that he is saying, just take this action and watch what I do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's been quite a few times over, even over this past year where I have, I have said like, you know what, well, what if I just do this and this and this first? And like, what if I just, there's a couple other things. And as soon as I get those done, then that's, then, then that's the next place. And it's like one of those things where it's like, if I, if I've just, if I'll just go do that one step, then it's like everything else has just like moved out of the way. And it's like, oh man, like why, why didn't I just, why didn't I just trust it first? Why didn't I just take that step right. first? And, and I, I think, think yeah, go ahead. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, like you said, I, I feel like fear, fear is such a motivator and people, yes. you know, it's one of those things where it's like, people are like, oh, they keep you from not doing things. And I'm like, no, fear keeps you like from doing things. Like fear is such a motivator to, like, yeah. to and, do things that you, and, or to not do things, but to do things sure. that do not do things. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think that we overcomplicate it. Yes. Like, you know, you, you're calling, you, your calling may not be to be Lisa Turkers. Like your calling may not be to be, you know, Sarah Jakes. I mean, let's face it. Right. But, but God, it, it, like he gives you this one, just do the little thing. Right. And then so see you, what happens. You say calling. And obviously I have, I have this, I'm just like, I want to say, I want to use the word obsessed in a very good way right now. I have, have this obsession with calling because Last year, like whenever, or say it was the last year. I don't even know anymore. I think so. Whenever, basically, when COVID wiped out, wiped out my event planning business, there went my identity as this, you know, yes. achieving event planner. Um, and and really, I I was like, I don't have a purpose. I have no expectations. I have no identity. I have none of this stuff. So I I made it this like my purpose. What I became intentional on was finding my purpose. Like I didn't know what my purpose was. I just wanted to be intentional about finding it. So I've kind of been obsessed with that word calling and yeah. Jordan Rayner, he was at the, she works yes. at the conference and I love him. And I haven't finished, I haven't read the redeeming his time book because I was in the middle of reading the master of one. Yes. Book. Um, so, you know, and he really defines your calling as, you know, where your gifts intersect your passions Yes. And you have the best opportunity to serve. That's it. So I was going to say, so, you know, when it comes to calling and you're talking about your calling, like and you're talking to others about it, what does that mean to you and to them? Yeah, so there was another speaker. I was at a conference just before the one where you and I met uh, Clarity to Courage with Avery Forrest, and she had a speaker, Jane Johnson. And Jane talked about the story of Deborah in the Bible, but relating that to God gives us gifts, and then he gives us calling, which is exactly what Jordan said. Like, it's, it's where you get to walk out your gifts and everything is not easy, but it, it happens more smoothly because it's what he's given you to do. And I know that, that um, Summer and Michelle, who run She Works His Way, which was the narrow conference where Jess and I met, they talk about, you know, our purpose is really, there's only two things we are purposed to do, love people and make disciples, period. And in his graciousness, the Lord gives us gifts. And in his graciousness, he puts opportunities in our path to walk out those gifts. And so what I see women do, and it's what I did, 
is we confuse X business, X title, X promotion with calling, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, in my reinvention, I knew like I knew like I knew that I was going to the top of my network marketing company, like, because why would I not? That was my BC, my before Christ life, right? (laughs) Um, But what I didn't know, and now I've been able to beautifully look back on, was that God took the gifts and combined that with me finally surrendering and giving giving my life to Jesus and took everything that I had learned, development, and shifted me and said, you're going to go this way, this way. And very often as recent as the last few weeks, I have multiple businesses just like you do. And I've been like, well, but I, but I want my, my coaching and my speaking to be like my main thing. And God's like, can you just not accept that the provision I give you is the provision I give you? And it doesn't matter where it comes from. I just need you to be obedient in walking out what I've given you to do. And if that means a consulting client here or a coaching client there, or a speaking opportunity there. Again, I still have challenges with identity because I'm like, well, I say I'm a coach and a speaker, but I do this consulting thing. And God's like, no, no, you are my daughter. (laughs) That's it. Like there's nothing more that you need to be, right? And so I think we get very caught up in what calling or purpose looks like from a, from a, a, we kind of put it in a box. I like to think of it as I graduated with a bachelor's degree in sociology and it always frustrated me when I was looking for a job because I thought, darn, I wish I had gotten a degree in accounting because then I could just look for an accountant, right? Like it's very clean and crisp and clear. There, there's nothing, you know, mysterious about that. And so I think we really get caught up in this idea of calling having to be this job or that title or this business or whatever. And God's like, could just go love people and make disciples and I'll tell you what to do. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and do you, do you find that, especially when it comes to like gifts, like I know, so, so when I'm singing and someone's going, Oh, Jessica, like that was so great. And I've said like, it's just, it's a gift. Like God gave me a gift and I'm just so excited to be able to share it with you. I said that to someone before and their answer to me was, yeah, I don't know what my gifts are. I've never figured it out. Yeah. So if you, (laughs) asking for a not friend, asking for a me friend. Like when you come across those people that are just struggling with even understanding their gifts, sure. you know, where, where is it that you can help them in terms of just stepping, making those steps forward and just really just kind of discovering themselves. In sure. God? It's really a lot of questions that I ask when we're having that conversation. Like, what is it that, that you do that comes so easily to you that that you do it and you love it and you just don't even have to think about it. And, and it just happens and time passes. And like that to me is a gift, right? Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to business or work, you know, what is it that you would do that you enjoy so much and, and it just flows out of you in such a way that you actually would do it for free. Right. Those things start to point toward gifts. If we're talking about spiritual gifts, there are spiritual gift inventories that you can take online that will help you understand what are your spiritual gifts. Um, Not, you know, I hesitate to compare it to like a personality quiz because honestly it's God's right. But it does, it walks you through a series of questions that helps you really discern what are your spiritual gifts? Like I know that my number one spiritual gift, the one that's rated highest when I took the, the profile is shepherding pastoring. So speaking comes very easily to me. I have no fear of being on a stage and speaking. I can speak on the fly or I can prepare, um, speak just like we're doing right now or on a podcast or whatever. Like that is, that's a gift, right? Singing for you is a gift. And so if someone listening is really not sure, I just would spend some time journaling around what is it that I do that I love to do that comes so easily to me? What is one thing that people, you know, and don't know, but you're, you relatively consistently hear people say, oh my gosh, you just do that so easily. Or you're so good at that, right? Those are gifts. Those are things that that's what God has, has given you. And we have natural gifts like singing and we have spiritual gifts like, you know, 
shepherding, pastoring or, or whatever. And the cool thing about the inventory is it will also tell you um, what does that, what does that look like in every day? Because I'm not meant to be a past. Well, I don't think I'm meant to be a pastor, but God can do what he's <laughs> going to do. But it also tells you, here's what you want to be aware of. Here's how this gift could be an idol. Here's how the enemy could get you off track with this mm -hmm. gift. Um, and there's lots of places you, you know, you can explore that online from a spiritual gift perspective, but just from a natural gift, I think you really have to ask yourself, you know, what am I really, what, what comes so naturally to me and that I love doing. Um, and then there are things that come naturally that maybe you don't love. Like I'm good at sales. I don't particularly like it. So then how do I sort of marry that up? And, and really to me, that comes from a lot of prayer and journaling, like, okay, Lord, you've given me this, show me how you want me to use it. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. I, this is relevant, but it takes me back. You keep saying, you know, how, how we can get taken off track. And I feel like one of like that verse that, you know, that you said that, you, that you read and it's like, you read it for this, you know, this the hundredth time. And then you're like, wait a minute like, wait a minute. And the one that always kind of spoke to me and, um, and I cannot quote where it comes from, but it's after, you know, Jesus has been tempted, you know, for 40 days. And it's like the very last verse is like, you know, so he like tells, you know, Satan to get behind him. And then it says, you know, that he left and waited for an opportune time. Yes. So it's like, okay, yeah, he'll, you can tell him to leave. He'll leave. But like, he's still waiting. He's waiting yes. for you to be weak and waiting for you to question and waiting for your, you to feel unworthy and just, yeah. he's waiting. So yeah. even when you're great, maybe you are good for that second. It's like, that is that it's like pride. Like that is oh. that moment where he's like, got her now. <laughs> yes. And, and, and you asked this earlier, which I, I know I brought up before, but like, Oh, you know, so are you never overwhelmed? <clears throat> Listen, when you so love the Lord and you are so focused on everything you have is his, the gifts, the business, just lead me. And you know, like, you know, that Lord, I just want it to be yours, whatever it is. Um, Jenny Allen has a book called anything. And it's a, it's a dangerous, not dangerous in a bad way necessarily, but like she says, if you pray, Lord, anything, anything you have for me, like that's a big prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, and, and Satan knows, cause he is so cunning and conniving. Like he knows you're all in for the Lord. He's not going to leave you alone. Uh -uh. And it may not be big tragedies or whatever. I mean, you know, praise the Lord. Hopefully it's not, but it's sometimes the smallest things. Like I was in such a fog this morning and and I live this, like I teach this, I coach this and I'm in a fog and I'm like, Lord, I, I just, I don't even know. Like, you know, sometimes you throw so much at me and I'm like, I don't even know where. And I had to like, get a hold of myself, like not me, but I was like, Lord, I, I'm gonna need you to straighten me out here <laughs> because that's what Satan does. Right. So just know he will wait for an opportune time, but know that and this is what literally I say this, like get behind me, Satan, because my Lord and savior, Jesus has already claimed victory over me. So mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do that can take that off track. And that's empowering to me, not in my own strength, but to be able to acknowledge that he's claimed victory and that I am not alone. And that is most often one of the things that kind of stops me and like turns me back out of that fog. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I always feel like on days, like I have an hour dedicated every morning, just a devotion time, like just, just to sitting there with him. And, and I, like some people believe that, yes. you know, in those moments you need to be in the word and this and that. And there have been days where I have literally walked in with my computer and been like, I yes. need help. I don't yes. know. I do not know what to do. And I've asked you to come in and do this business with me. And I need help. And it's yes. like, it's crazy to me. Like after five years in business, I had never written a mission statement for my event planning company. And it was like, there was one morning, it was like my brain at like 6 a.m. was like, get up, Jess, like get up. It's, it's time to write our mission statement. Mm -hmm. and after five years of never having a mission statement in that business, after I had asked him to come in and do it yes. and now, like, don't, I don't want to be an event planner around myself. I want to like, I want to be in a partnership with you. Like I want to, yes. I want to do this together. And it was like, 
the next morning he was like, all right, let's write your mission statement. I think you're ready. Yes. And it's like, you know, so that time I, I say it's my devotion time, but it is that time where I just sit with him and I, yes. maybe it's meditation, med, maybe it is, you know, devotion time. I usually have some sort of insight. Maybe it's a book that I'm reading, like whatever it is. I just, it's, I, I heard John Maxwell say it and I love it so much, but he's like, you know, when I'm praying, I'm talking to God, when I'm meditating, I'm listening. That's right. And I love like, the, so many times, like I, I you know, I, I pray, but then it's like, I never listen. And so I've, I'd worked so hard myself in, especially whenever I'm in that fog, just to sit and listen. Yes. Yes. And, and sometimes, and it's more of a yoga technique that I like picked up years ago, but whenever you're trying to call your mind back, it's like, you know, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. I am breathing in, yes. I am breathing out. And there have been, you know, devotions that have been walking you through things. And it's like, you know, close your eyes and like, just, you know, write down the first words that you, that, that you hear in this, in this prayer time. And it's funny. Cause it's like, I've heard I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out so many times in a, in, you know, in a stretching or savasana or whatever kind of wor you know, world I'm in, but it was like in that moment, in yeah. that quiet for the first words that was like, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And it's like that, just that understanding of knowing like he gave me this breath. That's right. Like, yes. I woke up today to breathe in. That's right. Breathe out. Like it's just the words took on, you know, they take on such a different meaning whenever you mm. realize like God is behind those breaths. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And so, and, and I just would expand on that to say, that is part of the daily discipline. Please do not make it about perfection, whomever's listening. Like it's <laughs> not, you know, it's it's just, it doesn't, maybe you're not in the word. Maybe you really truly are just sitting and listening, but it. But it's, we give him our first fruits. That is the first fruits of our day. If we give him our first fruits, your day will go completely differently than when you don't. That and when is you so talk, true. Right. Which is probably why it was foggy this morning. Cause now I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know what I didn't do. Um, but, <laughs> I, but I love what you said about just, just sitting and listening and, and he will, he is, he is faithful to hear us. He is faithful to respond and look how he responded. Okay. Jess, we're writing your mission statement today, right? <laughs> like I write a lot because of like content and blogging and everything and there are just some days where I'm like, this is not flowing. And then there are other days where like, I can like get it done in an hour because the Holy Spirit's like, all right, let's go. Let's get this done. <laughs> but you can't know that if you're not spending that time with him. Yes. yes. So yes. good. Yeah. So I, so we've talked about it a little bit and you've talked about, I know a lot of concepts in it today, but behind you, I can see you've got this book and you say, you mentioned earlier, you have written a book. So will you tell us just a little bit about that? Just so anyone who's listening can hear more from you. Absolutely. So in 2019, I was working with a coach who said, it's time to write a book. And I was like, what? So, um, so I wrote a book that I published in 2020 called pursuing success. God's way, a practical guide to hustle with heart. And it is basically like a little bit of my story, but then it really talks about how does God define us? How does he define success? What does that mean to him? And then it walks you through what I call hustle with heart. So what are, what are those principles? What does that mean? How do we do it? What does it look like? Um, and then because we're going to hit obstacles, because Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. It talks about obstacles and how to overcome them. And then it talks about like, and then how do you live this out day in and day out? And it was, I'd never written a book before. I mean, the first time you write a book, it's the first time. <laughs> so um, it, it's really, I feel like just kind of a foundational resource. Mm. Um People can get it at my website. I have a Christmas book pack right now. I'll give you the link for that through December 15th um, where you can get, I'll sign the book for you and you get a, a bookmark of what I call the hustle with heart prayer, which is a prayer that I wrote in the book. But I really wrote the book to be kind of a guide. I wanted it to be very practical. I wanted it to be as practical for the person who sits down and reads it cover to cover as it was for somebody who like picks it up and opens chapter four and goes, okay, tell me about these hustle with heart principles. I wanted it to be very action focused. Mm -hmm. um, so at each chapter has sort of a list of inspired actions. It has, you know, I, Bible references throughout 
because that was very important to me, which was linking the Bible to business and what does the Lord say? Um, I'm not a Bible scholar and I work really hard not to take the Bible out of context and not sort of cherry pick verses here and there, but there is so much truth that I think the world doesn't acknowledge because, you know, the world doesn't always want to acknowledge God. And to me, the Bible is the foundational personal development. I mean, listen to the books that you just mentioned, right? Master of One and Redeeming Your Time by Jordan Rayner are biblically based, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I wanted it to be a very practical guide because when I came to Christ, Although I had my mentor, whom I call the velvet hammer in the book, <laughs> I had a lot of pushback. I had a lot of people, a lot of leaders in my business that told me not to talk about God. They were like, you're going to turn people off. People aren't going to want to do business with you. I really struggled with that. I struggled obviously with identity and, you know, losing business and, and different things like that. So I wanted it to be for anyone who, who's like, I want to build my business, but I want God at the center. And I just don't know how to do that. Mm. So that's really what it helps you do. I love that. I can't wait to read it. I have not read it. I don't even know that we even talked about it at the conference. I know. I don't, I don't, think I don't even know that I knew you had a book until we really chatted today. So that's exciting. And we will definitely put a link down below so that everyone can access it. And then I assume also on your website, they can get to you if they want more information on coaching or consulting or speaking Absolutely. or any of those avenues. And yep. then in terms of social media, if they just want to follow you, I heard you're like the queen of reels. So uh, well, we're I don't know about you. that. <laughs> I just started doing reels. I think my kids are incredibly embarrassed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, just Aaron D Harrigan, D as in David, it's my middle initial. And um, on Facebook, I'm the hustle with heart coach. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, thank you so much for all of your time today. Oh. I know for me, I just, oh, I, when you spoke at the narrow conference, just hearing, hearing just your, your passion for helping people, just oh. loving others and just trying to help people or ladies, especially in business, really find their calling and turn that business into just it, every time I've heard you speak, I'm just like, Lord, maybe you've put her in my life so that I can, so that I can see what you want out of me. Like I just, yes. I, oh. I, I have so much, I have so much inspiration whenever I hear you speak. And I, I hope that you know that, you know, it, it's funny when you talked, I was like, oh my gosh, is that what I'm trying to do right now? I think this, I think he literally put someone in my life that I can like listen and mentor and, <laughs> and look online and be like, how can I get coaching from her? Because I, I too, I'm in that place where I'm like, am I, am I like just reading the chapter before I'm speaking? Like, am I worthy enough to be even the one saying this? So yes, you are. <sighs> if God gives you the message, he's meant for you to share it. It's not just meant for you. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're so sweet. I, I just, it. I have just, I have loved it. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank and I know you. we're going to, we're going to talk more. Yeah. Not just on podcasts, but in life, because now I've just been so inspired by you. I'm never going to be able to let you go. So there you go. You're amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for being obedient to God's call to start the podcast and do the, to do the work that you're doing. I mean, your yes is changing lives and who knows what those lives will be, but he gives you those instructions and you've been obedient. So that's a beautiful thing. Thank you. And thank you for your time. And thank you for all your words. And I'm excited to be able to see more of you and hear more of you and definitely read your book. So yes, <laughs> man, just listening to that conversation again, gets me all fired up to continue to redefine my hustle and escape the overwhelm and overachievement. Oh, so hard. But what an incredible experience. And I know that this is going to be a podcast that I'm going to come back to over and over as I continue to pursue my purpose. So thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the in crowd where all entrepreneurs and inventors and entertainers and investors and inspired individuals and anybody. Can I say that? I think so. I like it. Anybody can find insight, encouragement and stories of reinvention, but most of all, inspiration. Thanks for tuning in.